Hi there, I'm David Bell. Welcome to this episode of Tall Tales and True from the Far Country. It's all about planning a service. Now when I plan a service, the hardest part is getting started. I have to decide what the theme is. Today's worship leaders and preachers have so many resources available that it's easy to lose sight of the big picture. The theme is lost among a ton of details. So I have to keep asking myself, what's the principle, the concept I want people to gain from this gathering? If I don't have this theme, then the service is not likely to go well. People will leave not knowing what it was all about. Nowadays, I usually start with images to find the theme. One time I was reading a poem by R.S. Thomas called Calling. He said the phone was the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What on earth does that mean? Well, they broke God's command not to eat fruit from that one tree. Now, R.S. Thomas went on to say, quote, We may call everyone up on it, but God. To do that is to declare that he's far off, unquote. Now, that's a theme and a half. God on the phone. Haven't we treated God most of the time as unknowable? Yet the Christian claim is that God is near and God is knowable. My head still spins on this one. After a lifetime in ministry, all I can say is, I'm in a happy state of ignorance. Sometimes an image itself may become the prayer or the sermon. Paul Clay's work, for example, or a song performance. Visit Helvardlund's YouTube channel to hear what I mean. We forget too often that worship is a performance for both preacher and congregation. It's a ritual. It's a drama. Sometimes it's high drama. Now, to end with, Here's a true tale from the far country, this time the far country of times past. I was sitting in the pews at one particular church many years ago, decades ago, and the preacher told a deep and dark tale to the children. It was all about a missionary or two who gave their lives in service of their Lord. It was a stirring tale of death on a high mountain in a snowstorm. He or she finished on a very sombre note, whereupon the choir immediately stood up and sang the sublimely happy introit, I was overjoyed. So was I, and I couldn't contain my joy and mirth for the rest of the the service. Why do we always get the giggles at the wrong moment in worship? Maybe it would have been the best thing if everyone had laughed out loud. Sermons are the easiest and sermons are the hardest element of worship to make happen. The preacher is, in reality, very vulnerable. Hence, I'm always glad of the opportunity to read books of sermons. I want to find out how others set about the task of preaching, how they put it together and what ideas have excited them enough to make public utterances, sometimes in difficult and horrible circumstances. The sermon is an art form that does get read, but remember that initially it has to be preached. It's the lived act of preaching that matters most. Join me next week for another in Tall Tales and True from KiwiConnection.nz. Subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching.